All right, thank you so much, Ron, and everybody at the Free Mind Group, um, and everybody here today. Uh, it's uh, been a wonderful opportunity. Um, I've been working with Ron for over two years now, and I was so excited to finally meet him in person. Um, so I will share my journey. Uh, there we go. So I'll talk a little bit about the company, um, our mission and vision, um, and then our technology and product, uh, the DX100 platform. And then I'll share a few um, insights about our non-dilutive funding journey and how it's helped us and how FreeMind has helped us. So at Amplify DX, we're pioneering for a new wave of molecular diagnostics. Um, our mission is to transform molecular diagnostics and make them more accessible and affordable um, to fight uh, global infectious disease challenges. Hopefully we won't have another pandemic, um, but we'll help uh, the country be ready for it. Um, we also have a commitment to the voice of manufacturing. A lot of people talk about voice of customer, which is important, um, but in our sector, there's been a lot of failures over the years to be able to really scale uh, point of care diagnostics um, because of manufacturability issues, and I've learned a lot about that, so that's an important um, mission of ours. Um, because that results in low cost of goods, and with low cost of goods, you can really um, address underserved uh, communities that are price sensitive. Um, so we really uh, have a vision of affordable diagnostics that have lab quality everywhere. Um, so our product is the DX100 molecular point of care platform. Uh, we developed a, a generation one. Um, uh, we'll talk more about the funding for that under the COVID pandemic and we're currently uh, developing our generation two. Uh, it uses isothermal amplification, so like PCR, but isothermal, uh, but with real-time fluorogenic detection. So think lamp meets uh, TACMAN. Um, uh, that chemistry also allows us to uh, very rapidly and sensitively detect multiple targets. Uh, we can multiplex, so we can detect up to 10 targets at a time. So with one sample, you can detect 10 different pathogens. Uh, we're really focused on infectious diseases. Uh, that multiplexing capability allows us to do what's called syndromic panels. So if a patient presents with standard symptoms, and it could be one of a, a number of different um, infectious organisms, so think respiratory symptoms. Is it the flu? Is it COVID? Is it RSV? Um, or with STIs, there could be a number of different organisms that cause that, so we can diagnose all of those at the same time. Um, as well as offer uh, resistance uh, or therapy selection. Um, our low cost of goods uh, for the instrument and especially the cartridge uh, will allow us to penetrate into the fastest growing segment of the IVD sector, which is the community health sector. Um, I'm very pleased that some of our clinical collaborators, our most important clinical collaborators from Facile Health um, in Miami, Florida are here today. Um, it's been a wonderful journey with them, and I'll talk more about that. Um, but the community health uh, sector or market is the fastest growing one um, in diagnostics um, in this sector that can really benefit from point of care testing, uh, but until today it hasn't been um, affordable. Um, and we have a very sensitive platform, and we've been able to demonstrate that with a clinical trial, 98.7% uh, sensitivity. So the solution is differentiated uh, because of the multiplexing capability, the low cost, uh, the results are available in under 20 minutes. It's very easy to use, um, high sensitivity, and we have some novel chemistry that allows multimodality or detection of both nucleic acid and protein. So how has working with Free Mind and non-dilutive funding helped Amplify DX? Um, first of all, the money. That's the most important part. It's obvious. <laughs> Everybody loves non-dilutive funding. It's not on the cap table. Um, it's been tremendous. So this is really how we started the company. Um, it was an unusual situation. We're uh, a collection of industry veterans. I was at Roche for 20 years. Collectively, the team has over 200 years of experience in this industry, in this sector. Um, and when the pandemic started, uh, 
I got together with my co-founders. It's a journey, it's a story that takes longer than a few minutes to, to describe, but we got into the Radix program from NIH, and that's how we got started with the company. So that money was very important. Um, we've received uh, $5.1 million to date, or will receive it with, uh, we've been awarded 5.1 million, haven't received all of it, um, because uh, many of our programs are milestone based. Uh, so most of our funding has come from the Radix program, Rapid Acceleration of Diagnostics from NIBIB. Um, and that is a very competitive, fast-paced, think Shark Tank meets uh, diagnostics and life science. It's really intense. It's very different from your standard um, SBIR grants. Um, that's where most of the funding is, and we're in the uh, Tech 3 program to develop our second generation device. Uh, we also have an award from uh, the National Cancer Institute to develop an HPV test for resource limited settings. Um, we're working on that in collaboration with UC San Francisco. And we have an award from NIAID for what's called our Sting Plus assay. So this is a, a sexually transmitted infection test. Uh, includes Neisseria gonorrhea, um, and the plus means we also can do antibiotic resistance, so guide treatment therapy um, to enable test to treat. So this is our awards to date. Um, we're working and continue to work actively with FreeMind. Uh, we just submitted on Thursday last week two uh, phase ones, um, one to NIAID and one to NCI. So fingers crossed. Uh, a couple months before that, we did a resubmission uh, to NIAID. Uh, we've also done a BARDA um, application this year. And yeah, we just keep cranking them out. Um, Ron and James, our consultants, are fantastic. How else has working with FreeMind and uh, working on these grant applications helped us? It has helped us to identify our customer segment. Um, it's really come together in the process of our clinical trials and writing up the research strategy for these grants, uh, who we are really trying to serve. Um, so traditionally, CLIA wave tests can go into physician office labs, urgent care settings, that's very common and standard, hospital, emergency rooms. But where we've done our clinical trials, where we've really honed in on our community health centers, such as Facile Health, uh, shown there, together with me and Junior, um, at a visit last year um, in Miami. Uh, this uh, community health centers uh, serve uh, over 10% of the US population for health needs. Um, most of the patients are either underinsured or uninsured, so um, self-pay or Medicare, Medicaid. Um, so they really need not only high quality, but affordable access to testing. Um, so these cost pressures are really high. Um, how else has this helped us? It's really shaped our pipeline. Um, as one of the first things, I, I have an advisor that I brought on through, um, he's part of our, uh, one of the angel networks that invested in us. And his, he was a CEO of a company that had received over $50 million of uh, government funding. So I brought him on as an advisor. And he said, if you're going to be applying to SBIRs, because I didn't really understand the program coming from industry, needless to say, Roche has never applied for an SBIR. Um, Jack advised me to bring on um, a clinician, an MD, uh, which I did, and Ron can attest, he's been a, a fantastic asset because we're a very tech-focused group. Um, together uh, with that team, we have an understanding of not only the technology, how to scale it operationally, how to sell it, um, we have the, the clinical insights, and it's really shaped a very highly differentiated um, uh, pipeline uh, that takes advantage at where we have a product market fit. Um, our technology enables syndromic panels. What are you going to do with that? What, what's needed? What bugs do you need to detect? You know, so it's, it's been a fantastic journey and it's really helped us shape our pipeline. Um, I hear from a lot of investors that of course, they like non-dilutive funding, but they also um, are concerned that grants are a distraction to companies. 
in no way do I feel that any of the grants we've applied for or the funding we received are a distraction. They are totally in line with our portfolio and has helped us shape it. Because it really, like, there's nothing like a deadline to really, like, <laughs> get you moving. And they're, like, if you're one minute late, forget it. Um, the other advantage of this whole process has been the extremely intense management oversight uh, that comes with the Radix program. That was very unique. When I say it was like Shark Tank, it really is, um, together with Survivor. Like, if, if you're not meeting your milestones, you are. You are out of the program. We meet daily as a team. We meet with our Radix team twice a week. We have weekly reports into them. We have monthly reports into VentureWell, who's managing this program, and we have milestone reports. We go through, it, the, the application itself was very light compared to a standard SBIR. It, it was just filling out a few forms online. Then it goes into a, a very intense assessment, um, the steering committee, deep dive. Um, for one week during the pandemic, the deep dive was one month for Tech 3. If they decide that they like you, and that's where you really work together to shape what your project is going to be, then comes this management oversight. It is intense. Um, to date, just for the program we're in now, uh, we've met three out of four milestones. We're working on milestone four. But with those first three milestones, we've generated nine reports with over 450 pages of highly technical information. Also, executive summaries. Um, so that people can understand it. This is great content for our data room. We've just kicked off our Series A, great content. So with that, I would really like to thank our partners at FreeMind Group for all of the help, um, and um, everybody from the NIH, all the agencies that have supported us. Um, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much.